Nigeria records first case of coronavirus. Is the country ready? And first, the government denies Christians a major target of Boko Haram attacks, but there seems to be a shift. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome. Hopes that the coronavirus epidemic would be contained in China has been tarnished as the virus has been discovered in over 50 countries and now one case has been discovered in Lagos, Nigeria. There's seemingly no cause for alarm. As previous weeks back, the Minister of Health, Osage Ehanire, said Lagos State was well prepared and ready to contain the infectious disease in the case of an outbreak. What on second thought? Now that the disease is in Nigeria, what is the government's response? And also, is there a way we could have prevented this? I have two guests with me in the studio. A third will be joining us via phone. Uh, I'll start with Lulu Elegbe. Thank you very much for coming in. And of course, we have Olalikon Adigun. Thank you for coming. Thank you, bro. Right, we'll be joined via telephone by Dr. Theophilos Otogo uh, from the United Kingdom. He's a general practitioner there as well to give us an update on the situation there so we can have a conversation on how we are managing ours here. Thank you very much for joining us once again. Let's take a look at the press briefing earlier today. The patient remains in strict isolation at our containment facility in Yaba and he's doing well under supportive therapy. As of now, we've started to trace the movement of this traveler from the airport through Lagos to Ogun State. And we're busy identifying any possible person that may have come in contact with him so that we can start our isolation and containment exercise to ensure that we break the cycle of transmission. I triggered all our various levels of um, power security and containment. Like it, I did mention, we're up till early hours of this morning contacting both the federal authority, um, including Mr. President, and um, everybody that needs to be aware, um, including the facility that uh, the, this patient had had contact with, um, the chairman of the company and everybody in the company, they've been very supportive. They had proactively also contained um, um, their own staff. So like the commissioner said, we had gone out, uh, people are out there now trying to track every of um, uh, suspected interaction um, that this patient might have had contact with and we're ready, our facility has been fortified to um, continue, if need be, of any form of tests and um, containment. That was the press briefing earlier this morning uh, to intimate uh, Nigerians and Lagosians as to what is being done with the very first case of coronavirus uh, here in Nigeria. Before we talk about what we're doing, let's look at what is being done in other climb. Our case study this evening will be what's happening in the UK. And we're joined via telephone um, by Dr. Theophilus Otoga. Uh, he is a general practitioner there. Um, do we have him on the phone? Thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you very much. A pleasure to have you. Uh, quickly, you are a general practitioner there, and um, you've had uh, confirmed cases of coronavirus. I'd like to know how early did you begin to put uh, procedures in place to try and um, manage this, or maybe ward it um, from spreading? Yes, I mean, it was very swift. When the, when the case was um, reported, um, the UK government put everything in place to make sure that the virus doesn't spread anymore. And um, there is enough information to patients on how to manage their illness 
if they have any suspected, if they think they are at risk of having an infection, i.e. if they traveled from areas where the cases were reported and they are showing symptoms of the lack of chest tightness and sore throat, they have to contact the center where they will be triaged and, and put into the necessary pathways for the detection of the virus in order to prevent um, spread to other people. So what, what is the national policy as regards this particular health threat? The national policy is that any cases will be reported to a center via a telephone consultation and the staff manning the centers we have to question the person about the illness and when it is suspected that the person has the problem they have to be set forth or refer to a place where they can be swapped to confirm the diagnosis. Okay, so in the event that um, a practitioner gets to see a patient without knowing that um, the patient originally had the virus, when that is discovered, what is the protocol? When that happens, the practitioner will have to leave the room and then um, ask the patient not to go out of the room, then speak to the patient over the phone, and um, then the, the process will take place in, to find out how the patient will be swapped. Okay, um, what's the feeling at the moment? Is there a sense of panic or is there calm? Has the government been able to um, bring down uh, tensions? Yes, it's a kind of a mixed feeling. Uh, it's, a, it's a combination of um, calm and a bit of panic, actually. Um, but, you know, with the awareness all over the place, is um, the type of calm the situation down because most people now know what to do when they have um, problems that might suggest they have infection. But yes, there is still some evidence of panic in some areas. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Teofilas. I'm afraid we have to leave it there. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, my guests are in the studio now. Let's uh, get in, uh, Lulu. Let's um, hear your, you've heard what is being done in other climbs. At least we have an idea what's being done in other climbs. Now we have our first case. Uh, what is your assessment of the information that the government has put out as of today? Um, to be honest, I've been quite impressed. Um, I think they've um, gotten out ahead of this. Um, they've been quite transparent in terms of um, what has happened, the steps they are taking, and um, what, even to the point of letting them know that, because the, one of the ways to prevent um, an outbreak from spreading, especially in an urban area like Lagos, is they, there's this thing called contact tracing, where they start to trace every single person that that person has come in contact with, just to make sure that they're not carrying, or he's not transmitted the virus to those people. So they've been quite clear, they've been quite transparent in terms of how they are doing these things, what they're doing. So it's not um, where I think we're used to, um, even in, I guess probably even the Chinese government trying to cover some of these things up. No, it's not that bad. But I like the fact that they've actually come out and said, yes, we have this case. This is a verified case. Um, the person is in this facility in Yaba. This is what we're doing about it. And this is how we're trying to prevent this from recurring. Um, so I'll give, them an, uh, I'll give them an A for this in terms of how they've handled it. it it's been quite impressive, I think. Okay, um, Alalikon, 
your take on the general preparedness and the information sharing that the government has done since we first heard of the uh, coronavirus? Okay, I've been following this issue since January, and uh, I've been uh, waiting. I've been waiting for to to know what uh, the government is going to do in event of an outbreak. Uh, and interestingly, since January, government, uh, federal government, allocated some amount of money uh, in January for this in prepared and continuous assurance that we are going to uh, be pro the, the virus is going to the outbreak is going to be properly managed. Which I think uh, that is what is needed. You need to tell the people you are prepared. You need to give uh, make people uh, be assured, be, make people be, to be secure uh, in terms of what they should expect in terms of this kind of uh, uh, an outbreak. And I think the government, has, since yesterday, the government was very, very clear in their press release from the Ministry of Federal Ministry of uh, uh, Information, stating it clearly and that the, the whole issue is... Uh, and one thing that uh, is worries, it's worrisome is the aspect of information control and management over this issue because there's, there's, there seem to be too much information centers, there's too much communication centers, everybody's just coming out with all manner of information as to oh, who did this person contact with. So that is where I think government needs to uh, really, really uh, get it right in terms of information management and control. Okay, let's let's take it piece by piece sure. now. The, uh, pre at the press conference earlier today, um, the commissioner told us that there is an 80-bed ICU isolation facility already prepared for Lagos and uh, they, they also told us that um, the state has developed a form that travelers that are coming in will fill out to give this information. Now let's move to just three days back at plenary we had uh, the deputy um, um, senate president um, uh, raise an alarm basically um, in the floor of the house. He said he was in South Africa and what happened at the airport was completely different from what happened at our airport here. He said when they were held for 30 minutes, they had to be screened, tested, and all of that before they were allowed to go into the population. Sure. The, as of now, we don't know that there is any case there, right? But here, he said there was no form of screening. He was given a form, and I, I presume that's the same form the commissioner was referring to in the press conference today. You fill it out. How do you feel? Your nest of kin, um, the countries you've been to and stuff like that, and you're let to go. And he said, this is frightening. You know, that was just three days ago, and we've been at this since sometime in December. Yeah, so I think that's the that's the flip side of being happy with how they've responded to it. I think it's the the prevention is the other side of it. So the the Italian gentleman that contracted this virus, um, he flew in from Italy via Turkey, I believe. Um, but obviously he's 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 um, he flew out of Italy, which is the epicenter of the coronavirus in Europe at the moment. Italy has the highest concentration of European countries. So I would have ex what I would have expected is that anyone flying from that destination, already there's a high risk because of what's going on there. So anyone coming from there, even if they've flown through other transit points to get into Lagos, as long as you know that they started their journey in Italy, I would have, what I would have expected was a lot more stringent um, checks at the airport from people, especially from people coming from high risk areas. Um, why the government doesn't seem to be doing that, I'm not sure. It's obviously, it's possible that by the time, um, don't get me wrong, it's possible they, they, they might have even missed it, even if they were doing those checks, because at the time um, he arrived, he may not have been showing any symptoms. So nothing, so there's no amount of checks they will carry out unless they start testing everybody individually, which obviously they're not going to do. So from that perspective, I understand why they're giving people those forms to fill, because if it turns out that somebody starts showing symptoms a week later, two weeks later, whatever it is, then they have those forms to start to contact everybody that was on the same flight with that person. But at the same time, like I said, if you have people coming in from high risk areas of this virus, then they, I wouldn't expect, if, if someone is flying in from Italy or from China or from Iran now, because Iran um, has also yeah. seen a spike in the cases. If you have people coming from those countries, I would expect the checks to be more stringent than someone flying in from, say, Ghana or from the UK or from the US, for example, where they don't have that many um, of these cases. So that's the part of the prevention I think the government needs to 
be able to handle properly because the reality is that this this isn't an easy thing to deal with because the symptoms of this coronavirus, from what I understand, Incubates are quite yeah, for a while. yeah, and and the same the, once the symptoms even once the, the person becomes symptomatic, it starts almost like a common flu. So you, it's possible people have it and don't even know they have it. I'm not trying to create panic or anything. I'm just saying we need to be extremely careful. Everyone just has to take responsibility, hygiene, washing of hands and doing all those things. Yeah, and that, that much the ministry has come out Yeah, too. exactly. But yeah. at the same time, they, we can't, we the people cannot be the ones carrying out those checks at the airports. This coronavirus isn't, it, it, it's, for it to be in Nigeria, it came into the country. So those ports of entry are where they're supposed to be carrying out those sorts of checks. I will, I, I will come back to you in a bit too, because sure. there, there was a release uh, from the Kenyan government, a directive exactly. that was very explicit. We'll talk about that after we speak with um, another um, medical practitioner, um, but here in Nigeria, I'm talking about uh, Dr. Um, Olamide Okulaja. He is the Director, Advocacy and Communication, Farm Access Foundation. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I believe you've been following the announcement today. What's your general assessment from a medical perspective of the um, assurances and the information that has been passed on to Nigerians today? Well, I think, first of all, the most important thing is that Nigerians do not panic. Because if they panic, then it will then elaborate um, some form of reaction that can result into other disasters apart from coronavirus itself. Um, I've recently, you know, I've been to a couple of countries. Actually, the reason why I couldn't be in the studio is because I'm also coming from another country. And I saw the, you know, methods that have been put in place by the Federal Ministry of Health and also the Lagos State Government of people coming into the country and to be sincere, I'm a bit satisfied with the level of um, awareness that has been raised at the airport and the interventions that have been set there off. Um, a lot of people have been wondering how the coronavirus case got into Nigeria. But the important thing to know is that in 80% of cases, it's actually asymptomatic at the commencement of the ailment. So it may not be picked up at um, the port of entry until the person becomes symptomatic. So it is important that we are very vigilant as people and also as um, individuals to ensure that we are very aware of the people around us and the types of symptoms that they are displaying um, around us, basically. The, the, the government says they're tracing, trying to trace the people that this Italian has been in contact with. How long will this take for it to be effective, really? So, you see, from the point of um, if, when a person becomes symptomatic or infected, it's usually about 14 days um, for the virus to show whether, you know, it's infective or not, or if somebody has the disease or not so usually around the, around the world it has been advised that people are quarantined for 14 days after contact of the of anyone that has the coronavirus but i must commend at this point the efforts of the Lagos state government in being able to trace and raise the awareness and also put into play um, mechanisms that will help in quarantining those that have come in contact with this person that has now been confirmed a case of coronavirus. All right, before I let you go uh, quickly, the issue of flights. Um, some countries are closing, um, stopping flights from other parts of the world into their country, particularly from China. What's your take on that call? Should we consider that at this point? I think it's important to raise awareness of the virus, but I also think that we should be careful to harm an economy that is already harmed. Uh, a lot of the things that help provide the economic viability of countries include 
um, transportation of foreigners into the country and out of the country, foreign direct investment. While some countries can afford to stop particular flights from coming into their country, some other countries can't afford that. So it's important that in deciding the next steps that we take as a country, we are very careful in weighing the pros and cons of our actions going forward. Right. What, I would ad- what I would advise, however, is that areas where there are large gatherings, such as churches, mosques, parties, and all of that, are a bit more conscious of, you know, people that attend, and people are also conscious when they attend these kind of functions because those are the areas that will be more susceptible to contact um, infection. Thank you very much, Dr. Olamide, for joining us. Thank you. All right. So he's talked about, that is his perspective on travel. But I want to add quickly that the Kenyan government has issued a statement. They have, they've handed over the entry into the country to the Ministry of Defense. All their pe- medical personnel are going to take charge of people coming in, especially um, international travelers. They've mandated that compulsory isolation for all international uh, travelers be made. They've also blocked all ports of entry. Um, Ministry of Health is supposed to, so many things have been rolled out. Um, some people are saying it's great, and he's saying that we should exercise caution. Well, it depends. I think with Kenya, I think this is actually a reversal from their initial position, because what they initially um, were saying was that they wanted people to self-isolate um, if they're coming from high-risk countries. But I think there was a that, back- that secular, I think, was released today. Yeah so, so yeah, so I think there was a backlash about that, which is why they've, um, they've gone... Through, they've taken it through these extra steps. Now, I, I agree with uh, Dr. Lamide. I mean, it's we need to be careful. If we if we get to a point where we have to say, you know what, all flights from, say, China, for example, cannot land in Nigeria, that's something we need to be very careful about. And we need to be careful based on the fact that we're in a completely different place from, say, the US or the UK, for example, that can say, you know what, we don't want any flights from China. It doesn't matter what part of China they're coming from um, until this outbreak is dealt with or until this outbreak is over. But right now, like you mentioned, it's in more than 50 countries at the moment. I think as at yesterday, there were about 80 something thousand confirmed cases around the world. So, I mean, how many countries are you going to ban flights from? Because yes, China is the epicenter. Yes, that's where it started. But then you have other countries that have seen spikes in the last few days. You have South Korea, um, you have Japan, you have Iran, you have Italy. Um, and this, this is starting to, it, it's getting to pandemic levels at the moment. So it's not, I, I would question the wisdom of saying, um, let's stop flight from one particular country because right now it's no longer one particular country. Okay, let, let, let's, let's take, it, take it from another angle. Mm. The Hajj, uh, the Hajj Commission here in Nigeria has said there's been a suspension and that's because Saudi Arabia has taken that move to try Absolutely. and contain this. That's a big deal and it's like um, one of their top uh, period and they've done this to curtail the spread Makes of uh, coronavirus. What, in your opinion, can our government do more, like present a more holistic approach that will, you know, for you work when it comes to um, how they're managing uh, the virus? Yeah, well, um, again, uh, I will say, I will agree with Dr. Lamide that we need not to get to the level where we begin to uh, raise panic, where we begin to tell people, where we, uh, allow people to get to panic mode so that we don't we have to avoid that at, at this point again the countries like Saudi Arabia you have to consider the security implications we, we may have considered the security implic- health issues can be sec- can be national security issues too so in the case of Nigeria I think we need to, like uh, Dr. Lamide said we need to look at the pros and cons of this, the actions we are going to be taking because we are, we are having our economic issues. We, our economy is largely import uh, dependent. We, we, we depend on many people coming into Nigeria and pe- a lot of people do businesses outside Nigeria. So in this case, I will suggest a situation where at the level of our ports, we take more uh, preventive measures in getting these things from the ports. And again, it's virus, like uh, uh, the incubation period is about 14 days. 
the, uh, the person carrying the virus may not even uh, become symptomatic at that point. So this becomes very, very difficult and it becomes very, very tricky at this point. So if we take that kind of drastic actions, but the question is, do we really have the facilities to cope with the number of people coming? Nigeria is a very, very big, uh, the, the biggest economy in, in, in Africa. So a lot of, it's, we can't be, uh, be talking about comparing Nigeria to China, uh, sorry, uh, uh, to, to, to Kenya in this regard. Kenya can afford uh, that kind of uh, uh, measures, but can Nigeria really, really have afford it? Do we have the facility to manage this kind of uh, crisis and this kind of uh, uh, pandemic? That's another issue. We have altogether. three laboratories as, as now. We have uh, the, had teams trained since December. We've yeah. had um, no, we are talking about so the many. Facility, we are talking about the facility in terms of the kind of uh, pressure, the, yeah. the kind of pressure. This uh, China uh, built a hospital in two weeks. I yeah, think. They, that they, is China. They well, they had to. They, 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 they didn't have a choice situation. because, they, I mean, it's like... Do we, we have that capacity, do you think? No, we don't. We, Let's be honest. Let's be honest. We don't. We, do. so, we, don't. So. That's the, we I mean, have plenty of time to prepare. So are you both very satisfied? Because the Federal Ministry of Health issued a press statement this morning, a press conference actually, yeah. uh, in Abuja, and then we had the one in Lagos. From all the information that's available to us as Nigerians, are you satisfied that should this virus spread from this Italian... We're hoping that we can manage it, of course. We're optimistic. Yeah. But should it spread that we have the capacity to contain it? Yeah, but it, it, so it depends because China, okay, let, let me put it this way. Spreading in a place like Nigeria, for example, where one person comes in and you find out that this person has it, maybe the person has been in contact with another 10, 20 people. The kind of facilities that we need to deal with something like that is different from um, a situation in China where you have tens of thousands of people that were infected initially, you have thousands of people infected. That's, those are completely different things. Which is why I said what Saudi Arabia did made sense because you have um, hundreds of thousands, of, perhaps from millions different part from different world. parts of the world, which Good. is one of the reasons this has spread so much because the Chinese New Year was, I think it was in January or so, yeah, and you had people traveling all over, flying into China, flying out of China during that period. And that was, that was when the virus really picked up. So that's one of the reasons it spread to so if the Chinese New Year wasn't around that time, I doubt, I if might be wrong, I doubt it would have gone, gone this far. Okay, your it. quick thought in 30 seconds. I'm told we're out of time for this segment. So uh, in, in the case, I think Nigeria has the capacity to, if there's one country in Nigeria, in, in Africa, that can manage this, this pandemic, I think it's Nigeria. Yeah, we certainly have come a long way from the Ebola crisis. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your thoughts this far. All right. Thank you for staying with us this far. We'll go for a short break, but don't go away. When we return, the federal government tells us who the real targets of the Boko Haram sector are. Do stay with us.